Good morning, everyone, and it is great to be with you uh, this Sunday morning. Uh, time to worship our God together, and uh, wherever you are, um, just know that the presence of God is with each one of us. We are joined together, and uh, it is great to uh, just come uh, into that moment of worship, uh, knowing that nothing can separate us, no matter where we are. Uh, I know we are not here together in person today, uh, but I, I, I don't let that distract us because God is still doing something in us and through us as the church. We are his church, and we are going to lift him up and glorify his name no matter where we are. And so I pray that uh, uh, that same spirit will lift you up uh, right now and uh, begin to infuse you uh, with the joy that we're talking about. Uh, we are um, looking at the joy of the Lord, and uh, hope, hopefully we are praying that that will begin to uh, grow up in us. And um, uh, this weekend, um, we have celebrated um, uh, our country's Independence Day. And, um, you know, no matter what is going on, I, I pray that uh, we realize um, we're not perfect, and we never claim to be, and we never will be in this world. We need to understand that we have put false expectations um, uh, upon us, and I know many of us have uh, turned away from our, our nation because of everything that is going on, and yet I, I do believe we still need to be thankful because out of all the world, uh, no matter uh, our shortcomings, and yes, we have failed in some, some very desperate ways, but you know what? You look around the world, and uh, God has still moved in this country, and uh, we have had freedoms and uh, like nowhere else in the world. And, and so we do need to be thankful and love our country, uh, not in a way of superiority, um, but in a humble uh, way of gratitude uh, for what God has done and a prayer that God is going to heal our land and is going to move past those things because it's not about man, but it's about God. And uh, so... Uh, I, I pray that you have had a, a good weekend of uh, uh, celebration, being with family and one another. Um, and uh, I, I pray that uh, you stay in touch. Uh, we don't know how long this uh, new order uh, is going to last, uh, but um, uh, we will let you know week to week on whether we are, uh, when we come back together and open up the doors again. Uh, but in the meantime, um, continue to stay connected and uh, uh, begin to believe that God is going to do great things uh, through us. Next week, uh, we are going to be celebrating communion. And uh, so if you were planning on that this week, um, uh, we're going to do that next week. And we're going to give you the opportunity again to drive up. And uh, so after the uh, uh, streaming of the service, uh, if you are able to, I encourage you to drive over to the church and we're going to celebrate communion together. Again, separated. We won't be coming inside, um, but we're going to uh, just uh, uh, celebrate uh, the great gift that God has given us through Jesus and his price that he paid for us. And so come join us in your car um, uh, for communion. Um, that will probably be um, around 1145 uh, to 12 o'clock, somewhere in that range. Um, uh, it'll be right after uh, the service is streamed next Sunday morning. So come and join us for communion uh, if you are able to, and um, uh, we would love uh, to be able to celebrate that with you. Uh, so keep that in mind for next Sunday. Um, uh, we'll be celebrating that together. Um, also, uh, tonight we will not be having our Zoom prayer meeting um, uh, Actually, I'm going to be spending that with my family, uh, with our kids, and celebrating uh, uh, this weekend with them. And uh, so if, if you guys would like to, I encourage you, you know what, get with some friends and uh, Zoom together and, and uh, pray for one another. That's always a good thing. And so, you know, we can have several little pockets of prayer. Um, let's pray for our church, pray for our nation, and uh, just uh, pray that God is just going to continue to do what his plan is. And uh, so with that being said, we won't be coming together in the uh, church's Zoom room, 
Um, but we'll be picking that back up again uh, next Sunday. And so hopefully you will join us for that. Amen. Well, let's take a moment before we get into the word and we're going to uh, look into uh, what God has for us today. But uh, let's just uh, pray. Let's pray for one another. Continue to pray for those that are suffering uh, through the sickness um, uh, with all the other uh, areas, whether it's emotional, financial. Um, we know our God is able. And so we, we, we lift up our loved ones and our friends and family. And I want you to know we're praying with you and um, uh, that God is, is at work and uh, uh, going to have his will in our life. So let's just join together and ask for the blessing of God upon us, his healing, uh, his direction, his provision in all of these things. Amen. God, I just thank you for one more day to come together to acknowledge uh, that, Lord, you are our God. And God, it is always a great day just to be able to lift the name of our God up. God, to reflect the glory of our Savior and our Redeemer. And God, we just thank you for all that you have showered upon us. Uh, God, no matter what is going on around us, God, we have so many things to thank you for and, and to count those blessings. And so, God, we just thank you, Lord Jesus. We praise you. But God, we also do lift up those needs. We lift up one another. We lift up our loved ones, God, that you would just reach into every circumstance, God, that you would be the healer. God, you would go before them, Lord Jesus, that God, you would just uh, give them strength and encouragement to know that, God, you are with them. And God, we know that in your might and power, you can raise up the sick right now. And we just pray it, God. If this is your will, do it. And we just claim it. Jesus, healing in the name of Jesus. God, you are able to provide. God, you are able uh, to comfort uh, those that are in the midst of grief. Those are in the midst of anxiety. God, I come against these things right now in the name of Jesus. And we just speak peace, God, that your peace would just cover, that you would open doors of provision, God, that you would lead in wisdom, God, and contentment. And in all of these things, God, we just lean upon you and we put our trust in you because, God, you are our answer. You are everything that we need. And we will uh, uh, look to you. We just thank you for all these things. And we give you the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We are in a new series called Joyful. No matter what goes on around us, God's plan for us is to be filled with joy. Because you see, our identity and our perspective is not based upon this world and these circumstances and the things that we go through. This journey is just a temporary path to the things that have been purchased by our Redeemer. When Jesus died and rose again, he put our destiny upon a new path. And we no longer are citizens of this world, although we live in it, and we uh, uh, hopefully reflect uh, his glory in this world, and we will enjoy this world as long as we are here and rejoice in him. Um, and because that is the case, God wants us to be filled with joy. Um, we should be of all people, no matter what goes on around us, uh, we should be reflecting joy and encouragement to those around us. And so we're looking at a book in the Bible, um, which is heavily um, a reflection of that. And it is a letter from Paul to the Philippians. And uh, in this letter, um, we see the joy of the Lord just overflow within Paul. And as we read this, he encourages and he shows how we can also live a joyful life. And um, so we're picking this up in chapter one, and we just started last week. I encourage you uh, to go and watch the previous um, uh, messages or listen to them on the podcast and uh, let these just begin to build up within us that we might also have the same joy that Paul had. That even though Paul was in the middle of prison, I mean, we're going through some hard times, um, but maybe some of you are. There are maybe those of you that are in prison that are watching these messages. You never know. 
Uh, but many of us are not even in prison, no matter what the circumstances are. So they're not anywhere near what Paul was stating. And yet, if he can have joy facing death and execution, uh, being locked up in a Roman prison, then we can find joy even in this lockdown and this pandemic and, and even the, the turmoil of our own situation. We can find joy. And so we started last week with this idea that it starts with a perspective of understanding the grace and peace of God. That when we start everything in our life from the foundation of grace and peace to the capstone of grace and peace, then that changes how we walk the journey of life in between. And, and so I, I have been praying that hopefully maybe you have been getting a new uh, enlightenment of the grace of God in your life and the peace of God and that you are reflecting peace, that you are giving peace. You are testifying to the grace of God to those around you. Um, and as you do that, I pray that the joy of the Lord will fill you. Well, we're going to pick it up again uh, today and go to the next uh, uh, few verses. Um, we're going to start in verse 3 of Philippians chapter 1. So let's pick it up and, and, and uh, see what Paul has to say. He says this, he says, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, making requests for you all with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. What a great statement. Paul says, I am filled with joy as I remember you, as I pray for you. Um, the, the joy in my heart comes out. And it's because of this, because of the fellowship that I have with you and the fact that I am sure, I am confident that the God who began a good work in you is going to complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Now, this is more than just a statement of confidence in what God is doing in their life. You see, the joy um, of his statement goes much deeper. Um, we don't always pick up on this because um, it is that Hebrew culture um, that Paul was from that as they many times wrote um, in their literature and in their uh, letters, it was a much more subtle uh, thing than what we're used to. Um, uh, many times uh, we say what we mean and that's pretty much it and it's on the surface. But yet um, uh, Paul was, was very much deeper that many times when he was talking about one thing, he's really talking about something else also. So even though he's talking about the confidence that he has that God is doing a great work in them, um, the words that he uses bring the Jewish mind uh, back to something that they would have immediately picked up on. Uh, because of the words that he uses, it would have brought them to another remembrance uh, of something that he's talking about and would connect them to something much deeper that God is doing. Um, so let's look at these words. He says that I'm confident... Uh, that he who has began, he who is beginning a good work will complete it till the day of Jesus Christ. Now let's look at each one of those. When he talks about these words, this, this word of beginning, he who began a good work will complete it to the day of Jesus. These words... Uh, are all found, uh, and, and this is important in the Bible, um, many times the things that they spoke would refer back to the first place that these things are mentioned. There, there's a lot of importance to first mentioning. 
um, uh, and, and things have ideas, have weight because of what they are connected to in the past. Where they were first mentioned, many times when they are mentioned again later, it is always a re reference back to remember uh, where it was first mentioned. And this brings us all the way back to the beginning in Genesis chapters 1 and 2, where it says that in the beginning, God created. See, there was something that God began, um, and he began uh, something in the beginning. It was creation. Um, and so not only did he begin something, but if you remember back in Genesis, uh, as it goes through the um, uh, story of creation, it says after day one that God saw it, and he said, this is good. And then after day two, he looked and he said, this is good. And after day three, he looked and this was good. And day four, good. Five, good. Six, good. You see, they would remember that he who began did a good work. So we have this remembrance of good works, that everything God did, that it was good. And then it says on day seven, that he looked and it was completed and it was very good and there was rest and it was the, known as the day of the Lord, the Sabbath day where there was rest and completion because it was completed. Now, you see what Paul is saying. He's saying, this fills me with such joy because I recognize that those of us who have said yes to Jesus, we have not just been forgiven. Uh, you know, we, we've not just skipped out on some punishment that we should have got. Whew, I'm glad we didn't have to. That's not what's happening. He said, the joy of the Lord comes because when I look at you and I see that, that you have said yes to Jesus, it gives me such joy because you know what I see in you? I see not just a forgiveness or a salvation. I see the same power that God used at creation when he said, let there be light. The same power of creation is working in you. You see, no matter what is going on around us, uh, it says that in the beginning, the world was in chaos. It was void. Uh, uh, it was, it was the, the spirit was hovering over the darkness. What Paul is saying, I don't care what darkness you're in. I don't care what chaos you're in. I'm going to let you know that I see in you the power of creation, that God is in there with you and he is creating something new. That you can have joy no matter what's going on around you, because the very power of creation is in you if you have said yes to Jesus. If you are walking with Jesus, he who began a good work, you have access to the creative power of God. Now, when you think of the creative power of God, that means that you have the God of creation on your side that he is able to simply speak life and it, it, it appears. You need to know that, that the darkness does not have power over you. Chaos does not have power over you. The joy of the Lord is that God has spoken into my life and his creation is at work and it is in control. You see, you need to begin to see your life as an act of creation. And if God has spoken creation into your life, then there is no darkness, there is no chaos, there is no suffering that is going to overwhelm that. Now, we may still have to go through suffering and chaos, but you see, it's not over. Because see, he didn't do it all in one uh, moment. 
creation started on day one. But it wasn't done. It wasn't complete. Then there was day two. It was good, but it wasn't complete. There was day three. There was still four more days to come. You know what? I don't care where you are. You need to understand it's not done yet. And so, yes, you may still suffer. But in the middle of suffering, I can be joyful knowing that the power of creation is in me and I'm not done. You see, there's coming a day where it will be complete. Paul said, there's coming a day when it will be day seven. Now, we don't know when that day seven will be. Many of us will have a different day seven because this life will be over and we will go into the presence of God when death ushers us into his presence. And you know what? At that point, it will be complete and we will experience Sabbath. We will experience rest. We will experience completion where God will say, now it is very good. But in the meantime, we can have joy on day three. We can have joy on day four. I don't know what day you're in in your life. And we're all maybe in different places of creation. But you see, Paul said, I have joy when I think of you all. Because he who began a good work has put the power of creation in your life. But here's the second thing. Not only was he joyful in seeing the fact that God was at work in them, but he was joyful because this act of creation um, was not just um, uh, a one-time thing. It wasn't just something uh, that happened and okay, he's done with you. You see, they saw history as going someplace. Paul said there is coming a completion. So not only was Paul joyful in the, in the good work that had been started, but he was joyful because he said there's a bigger plan than what you're going through. And you see, we need to understand that day one was not the end. That was not God's plan just to have day one. God's plan wasn't just to have day two and three. We need to understand there's a bigger plan in our life. You see, there's joy when we begin to understand that we have a purpose. And it's not just his creation that is moving towards a completion, but we are part of the plan of God. You see, you need to understand that everything that happens to you is not just about you. You see, you are in the very plan of God. And everything along our journey has to do with the completion of all of creation. You are so special. You are a treasure of God that he has worked you into his plan. And so you need to understand it. There needs to be a joy to understand that you are not just a side issue, that he has a bigger plan, but you're kind of uh, over here on the side and you're just making your way and then you'll be a part at the end. That's not the case. Paul said, here's what I believe, that he is working his good work. He is completing it. And the, work, the, the word there that he will complete it, it means that he will continue to complete in you um, everything that he has planned for you until you are the part that completes everything else. In other words, everything else is not going to be complete until your part is complete. You see, he does not look at the rest of the world as worth anything if you are not part of it. Many of us, we don't see ourselves as that important. And yet, you are that important for God. And so he is completing you. And your life needs to be lived in such a way that the joy of the Lord makes you the beautiful part that will be part of the completion 
of the kingdom of God. You need to know the purpose that you have. And maybe we don't even see what that purpose is yet. Um, you know, we think, you know, what, it, what is my life in comparison to the whole world of what God is doing? We may not see it, but God sees it. You see, when he is painting this great picture, this beautiful picture of creation, he doesn't stand back and just look at the, at, and how it all blends together. He's up close and he is taking pleasure in every little part of that picture. You are part of that picture. And Paul said, I take joy just knowing that you have a part, that I have a part, because he is working it to completion in the day of Christ. You see, there's a bigger plan. When we are suffering, when we feel anxious and worry, when we are afraid, maybe when we're just dissatisfied with this life, you need to understand that God has a purpose. You might say, God has a purpose that he, he lets me go through this? Yes. Because even the dark times of your life are bringing you, they are working in you a treasure that makes you beautiful. That without the darkness, you would never be as beautiful as what God is making you. You see, it's like that clam, that oyster. There has to be that, that, that piece of sand that irritates. There has to be that thing that causes pain inside the oyster that creates the pearl. And you see, whatever you are going through, I'm telling you, you may not see it, but you need to trust that God is creating a beautiful pearl out of you, out of me. So we need to understand that God who started a good work, who has put the power of creation in you, when you are at the end of your rope, maybe when you despair of life, when you feel everything is worthless, I, I want you to know that God is still at work in your life. In fact, the very words of creation are in your heart. If you will open up and receive the presence of God, if you will say yes to Jesus and just trust his plan, you can find joy. Because the joy is not in the end work. The joy is knowing that we are on the way. Whatever you're in, you need to know that God has a purpose and you are part of the bigger plan. You are an important part. We will not be finished without you. And so let's be rejoicing. Let's begin to realize that I am something that matters to God. Well, that's not the only thing. We need to take joy that the power of creation is in us. We need to take joy that we are part of a bigger plan. Don't get stuck on what you see right now because we're not done. But here's the third thing Paul said. I take joy when I remember your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. Here's the other thing that Paul said. I can take joy even though I'm in prison because you know what? God is creating within me something beautiful. And there's a bigger plan. Even though right now my life sucks, it's painful, it's sorry, but I am joyful because creation is at work within me and we're not done yet. But not only that, but he said, I'm not alone. You see, we are partners in this. And this is what he began to be joyful in prison, that even though I'm in prison, you're still out there doing what God has called you to do. We all, no matter what situation we're in, we can rejoice because God is using all of us together. We are not alone, but we are partners in the gospel. And so even when I am going through a failure, I can rejoice in someone else's victory. See, we need to get rid of our own pride. Many times 
We, we don't rejoice in other people's victory because all it does is make us focus on our failure. You need to turn that around. You begin to stop being jealous of other people. God, why do you bless them and you're not blessing me? That, that is a thought of the devil. We need to push that out and, and realize that God's not blessing me because that's part of the plan because he is creating within me something that, that uh, is not done yet. And in the meantime, I'm going to rejoice in their blessing, in their victory, because God is not done with them either. And we are all in this together. We all make up a picture. And so we need to begin to be joyful, understanding that I'm not in this alone. We are partners. Now, he says that I remember your fellowship from the first day until now. That word fellowship is the word koinonia. Uh, it's actually a, a, it's a financial term, means a partnership, that we are in this together, that we are partners in this, which means if one sinks, we both sink. But it also means that if one gains, then we all gain because you see we're all the same. It's one business, it's one kingdom, and we are all partners in it. Um, and, and so he says this, this koinonia, um, it, it is a picture of love. It is a picture of being joined together, of having a, a, a joint purpose. This koinonia is, is kind of like the unity of, of God himself, of, of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, how they, they, they live, they exist in this harmony. The joy of knowing that they love each other. That, man, I've got your back. When I'm down, you're going to pick me up. And when I'm up, I'm going to pick you up. That's the koinonia that God has called us to, to realize that we can have joy Maybe not based on what I'm going through, but based on what you're going through. And I can have joy that we're in this together. And that one day we are all going to be a family celebrating uh, our victory together. See, he remembered the first day, that first day when they first entered Philippi. It says that Paul went down to the river to to try and find those uh, that were worshiping God. And you know who he found? He found a bunch of women. In fact, the church in Philippi uh, was built uh, upon people you would have never planned. It was built on women, Gentiles, and it was built on a, uh, a jailkeeper, and it was built on a, a little girl that was lost and was transformed by the power of God. You see, he remembered especially a, a special lady named Lydia who was at uh, uh, Philippi. Uh, she was an entrepreneur. She sold purple cloth. She was uh, actually wealthy. And she persuaded Paul after she was baptized to come and she supported him. Um, she created the church within her own house and so he's saying, I remember that, that you gave everything for me. He remembered that day at the first because he remembered a, a jailkeeper in Philippi when the earthquake came and released Paul. The jailkeeper risked everything. Instead of killing himself, he came to Paul and came to know God. And they released Paul into the ministry there. Paul said, I remember these great pictures of your transformation of what God is doing in your life. And he said, that gives me joy when I think of what God has done for me, where he brought you from and where you are now. But not only do I remember where you started, but he says, I thank God for the fellowship that you have with me even up until now. And if we skip forward in Philippians in chapter four, and, and we'll get to that a little bit later, but this is what he says. He says, I rejoice in the Lord that now at last your care for me has flourished again. Though you surely did care, you lacked opportunity. And when we go down to uh, verse 14, 
It says, nevertheless, you have done well that you shared in my distress. You Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving, but you only. For even in Thessalonica, you sent aid once again for all of my necessities. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that abounds to your account. Indeed, I have all and I abound and I am full, having received from Epaphroditus the things sent from you, a sweet-smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. And my God will supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. He says, you know what? I'm astounded at what you have done for me. And it's not that I even needed it because God will supply what I need. But thank God for what you did because you know what? It is not about what you did for me, but that God out of your generosity is going to bless you even bigger than you ever were before. See, he, he, he began to rejoice as he saw their life just become even more transformed in God. See, not only did they send him uh, gifts of help, but they took great risk. You see, they stepped out for him. Um, for them to send these gifts to Paul, um, it took great risk. First of all, he was in prison in Rome, which means that from Philippi to Rome, uh, they sent Epaphroditus to take this to him that he had to either go one of two ways, either by boat or by land. And both of them were great risk, just traveling. Um, uh, we know that Paul himself was in many shipwrecks. And so traveling by boat was not safe. And traveling by land definitely wasn't safe. There were, there were bandits and, and robbers on the road that would quickly kill you for this treasure that you were bringing for Paul. And not only that, but they came into Rome where Caesar uh, was in charge, where Paul was in prison. And, and, and so they were coming against um, uh, the one that was able to put them in prison also. And Paul said, I rejoice because you have my back, even though it take great, took great risk. And so he said, I rejoice in this fellowship that we are in this together. So I don't know where you are in your life, but you need to know that you're not alone. You know what? You have fellowship with us. And this is why being part of the body of Christ is so important. Um, we are all part of the bigger body of Christ, but we all need to be intimately part of the smaller parts of the body of Christ. And that's why the church is so important. Because you see, as we join together as the church, we begin to love each other. We come into that koinonia that we partner with one another to build even the bigger body of Christ. And you see, we can rejoice knowing that we have each other's back. I have your back. And that's why we, we say all the time, let us know if there's anything we can do for you. We want to be there for you. And we should be like that for each one so that we can have joy knowing that no matter what, God is gonna fill our hearts with the contentment because like Paul said, I know that my God will supply all your needs. You see, you can rejoice in the fellowship of the body of Christ because in the body of Christ, even though I know we have failed one another at times, I know we hurt one another, but you see, when we begin to look past that, when we begin to take those opportunities to love one another, because when one of us get hurt, we need to help heal one another. But when we begin to bind together, even in those hurtful times, then God can raise us above the darkness and the chaos that wants to tear us apart. You see, the enemy wants to destroy that partnership. But you see, we can claim the joy saying, I know that the God who started a good work in us is gonna finish it until the day of Christ. And so we're in this together and I'm not gonna give up on one another until we get to heaven, until we stand before God as a family and say, we have made it.
until day seven, until the day of Christ. So we need to begin to let the joy of the Lord enter our heart, that we can say like Paul, whenever I remember you, joy comes to my heart because I know that the one who started a good work in you and in me and in all of us, he has given us the power of creation within our spirit. But not only that, but he is gonna keep working in us until the day of completion. We are part of a bigger plan and this world will not stop that plan. We are victors. We are more than conquerors and we will overcome. So I'm not gonna let the current circumstances get me down because we're gonna run this race and we're gonna run it together. And I know people are praying for me and I'm not alone. And so therefore, the joy of the Lord can come because I can just simply relax and know that people are with me as much as God. So I wanna ask you, do you think that you have no purpose? Well, you need to stop because God wants to start a work in you. He has a plan and he will give you a purpose. Maybe you feel, well, I've already blown my purpose. I've messed it up. He needs to start with someone else. Well, you see, you need to stop thinking that because it says that God is going to continue to complete what he started in you. I don't care if you've blown it. He's not done with you. You have not blown it. You think you've blown it, but that is just part of the process. God is going to complete what he's working in you until it's done. He does not give up on you. So come back to him and begin to speak the words of creation into your heart. Maybe you think I've already finished my, my job. Maybe you're older. We think we retire. You never retire. It says that he will complete it until the day of Christ. Well, I'm gonna tell you, it's not the day of Christ yet, so you're not done. I don't care how old you are. You need to know that you have a purpose and God is still working in you. You still have the power of creation in you. You have something to give to all of us. You are still partners with us. We need your fellowship. You're never done. So whatever day of creation you are in, let's rejoice in it. Let's remember that he who started a good work in us, it's a good work. It may not look good right now, but it's good. It will be good when he's done. He will complete it until the day of Christ. So lift your heads. Let's not worry about complaining. Let's not worry about everything that's wrong. Let's begin to testify to the world around us the grace of God, that God is at work, that God's working something beyond this pandemic. In fact, stop talking about the pandemic. Stop talking about the riots. Let's begin to be people that fill this world with talking about the joy of our Lord, the beauty of our God, who is working through the chaos of this world to create a better world. We need to be recruits. We are the ambassadors of God. We're recruiting people, not to this world, because we're never gonna solve this world. So stop trying. See, I think we are, we're spending way too much energy trying to solve this world, and we are never gonna solve it. This world is gonna be gone anyway. We need to begin to recruit people to the world that God is working on. Let's begin to share the fact that they can be a part of the bigger plan that we are part of. Let's just begin to share the beauty of God, the completion that is to come. And let's let that joy just flow out of us. Let's rejoice together as a body. Let's be strong in the fellowship of God. Just like the Philippians, they had Paul's back. Let's have one another's back and let's do it with joy. And as we do that, I believe God will meet your needs and lift you up and he will continue to complete that work every day and you will see the growth that he has for you. Let's pray. God, I pray that each one that's listening would be encouraged. I don't care what they're going through, the lies of the enemy in their mind and their hearts, but I pray that they would be encouraged to know that you who started a good work in them, you are going to complete it. 
that God, if they will say yes to Christ, if they will offer their life up to Christ, that he will speak the words of creation in the midst of the darkness, that he will begin to put the same power within them that you spoke into the very world. God, let us begin to walk in that power with one another and let us walk with joy, the same joy that you had when you looked on your creation and you said, this is good. It's not done, but it's good because you knew what you were working on, that there was coming a plan. There was a goal. And God, we may not understand the goal that's coming, but we trust you that it is good, that it is very good. And so God, let us put our trust in what your plan is and just begin to rejoice along the way. God, build our fellowship together. Let us be even stronger in unity that we can rejoice in one another, that we would be a source of joy to one another, God knowing that together we are going to make this creation beautiful when you finish us. And in all of this, God, we give you all the glory because, God, everything that we become is going to be a glory to you, that you would be glorified in us, that we might be satisfied in you. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Go in the joy. Be full of joy. Let God start that creative process in you every day. Look for a new way that you can experience the creation of God in your life. Even if it's through suffering or hardship or trial, because that's making a pearl. Let God work in your heart. I encourage you to join us. Join us on Wednesdays at six o'clock as we continue also uh, to look in the word of God and let the word uh, build us up and encourage us. God has just been doing great things as we've studied the word on Wednesday at six o'clock in our gospel project. So join us uh, Wednesday. We will see you then. And uh, then we will see you next Sunday as we continue uh, to look at experiencing the joyful life that God has for us. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you then.